Hi guys, today I'm talking about making perfect crisp edges and lines in watercolors. There's a few different ways to do that. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of them, specifically what method to use when you have a very specific end goal and how to use that, how to utilize them. The first thing that I wanna talk a little bit about is one of my favorite watercolor tools and that's masking fluid. If you've never used it before, it's pretty magical. It makes a lot of things a lot easier than when you don't have any masking fluid. Masking fluid you can use to make sure that the white of the paper is perfectly preserved. Once you put it down, it is latex based. It repels all the water that you're putting on top of it. So you can do layers of washes on top of what you masked. And then once you're done, you can peel that up and then either paint in that section that you kept nice and clean, or you can leave it the paper white, which I, I personally love using the masking fluid when I know there's an area that I want to keep white for the entirety of the painting. That way there's just no accidental painting on top of it and then tainting that whiteness. I can just leave that there and it stays that way. It also has a lot of great benefits of where you want to mask off a really complex shape and then be able to easily paint around it, especially if you're going to do multiple layers around it. If you are just freehanding, say, with this piece, if I wanted to do that background, which took a couple layers, if I wanted to do that and I didn't have any masking fluid, I would have to carefully paint around the character. And what that usually ends up resulting in is that each layer that I would do is just a little bit off from the last. So you're going to get a really hazy, non crisp edge between the background and the character. So by masking it off, not only does it make it easier, it also makes it much sharper. And like I said, it really does make it a lot more easy and effortless. When I was painting this background, I could just go in with this nice giant brush and get these really beautiful, large blendy washes. And then I would let it dry and then do it again. When I don't have masking fluid and I have to tediously carefully paint around things, it really kind of saps the joy out of it and it actually creates little pockets where I have pigments that lay differently because I wasn't able to get this nice larger brush stroke. It, uh, it concentrates a little bit more. So there's a lot more unevenness when you have to get in there and carefully outline around things. So being able to just go with really large, loose, I guess, brush strokes to spread out the pigment, that goes a long way with getting these really smooth, perfect washes. Okay, so I think probably the biggest, most important thing with getting really perfect crisp lines and watercolors is actually with the paper that you're using. So, so this can really depend on the quality of paper that you're using and the type of paper that you're using. I found that cheaper paper and student grade paper, anything that's really not cotton has a lot higher chance of, of bleeding, which means less crisp edges, less control, less sharp lines. So, I actually really recommend that if you're looking to upgrade something in your watercolor process and you can only do one thing, do the watercolor paper first because that's going to be a really big impact immediately over the control and the things you're able to accomplish with it. So I really highly recommend upgrading your watercolor paper. I use Arches. I have a link down in the description if you want to check out anything that I'm talking about, by the way. So I do have that listed down below, but I use Arches. It's a cotton paper. It keeps really crisp edges to the brush strokes that I do put down. So beyond quality, there's also different types of paper. So there's hot press and cold press, basically. I prefer the hot press because it's super smooth, which means I can get these really sharp line works. And I love that in my watercolor paintings and I can get really clean edges. And when I'm using the masking fluid on top of it, I can get really sharp edges with that. Basically perfect edges. With cold press, it's a little bit more difficult because there's tooth to it. So the paper naturally has peaks and valleys to it, which means you have to be a little bit more aware when you're spreading your masking fluid or using your brush to get line work or edges. I always have to make sure that I'm looking at it straight down and lining up the brush so that it does fill in those gaps and those peaks in a mostly smooth way. It just takes a little bit more concentration and effort to get really sharp, perfect lines with cold press but it is definitely doable. Cold press is a little bit easier to deal with as a paper anyways. So it is, it is one that I recommend if you're starting off to use cold press. I'm actually using cold press today for this painting, even though I normally prefer hot press. And painting wet on dry is probably the most obvious choice when you want really crisp lines. So when you're painting with watercolors, you basically have two choices. You can paint wet on wet, which is how you get really soft blended looks, basically the watercolor look or you can paint wet on dry, which is how you get the complete opposite of that. Edges, 
sharp, crisp shapes, basically. So with that, while it seems really obvious, oftentimes I will think that an area is dry, that I let it be dry enough, that I let enough time go by that I can paint on top of it. And then when I do, even if it's just like 90% dry or 80% dry, it will feather that really crisp edge or line that I put down and then sap the color into the, the other color that's drying. So, so I think the biggest little like thing that, that I've had to learn is to be one patient and two observant. So I actually like to just touch the paper before I do another layer on top of it. If it feels cool to the touch, then it's probably still a little bit wet. And if that's the case, then I pull out my very trusty heat gun. This thing is probably my favorite watercolor tool. It's been so handy and probably has made painting so much more enjoyable for me and faster because I don't have to wait for paint to dry so I can just work through things. It's amazing. But the benefits are if I touch the paper, it feels kind of cool. Or if I have areas that I know still wet and I need to dry it out, I can instantly dry that area out or mostly instantly. And then I can go in with confidence with the next layer on top of it or the line work on top of it. And I know it's gonna stay crisp and it's gonna stay exactly where I put it. And I do have a link to the heat gun and the masking fluid and basically everything else that I use to create this painting down in the description. I've gone through a lot of trial and error to find the different tools that I am most happy with. So, so I've got those listed down below if you're interested. So recently I've been getting a lot more into doing line work with the watercolors themselves, which comes with a whole nother set of, of obstacles to figure out when it comes to making sure that they stay really crisp. Uh, where when you're using say like microns or pretty waterproof line work before you use any watercolors they're crisp already from the very beginning so you don't even have to worry about it which i personally love it's really nice but i've been wanting to get a more adaptable way of approaching line work so this is what i've been doing so when you do line work with something that can dissolve into the watercolors like using watercolors to create the line work or say India ink or anything else basically that's not water fast, waterproof. You have to build it up basically at the very end is how I prefer it. But sometimes depending on the pigment, you're able to put it down and then do washes on top of it. Some paints will instantly bleed and reactivate and other paints will just adhere to the paper and not reactivate again. So. It's always really important to understand your pigments and know which ones will behave differently. But if you are doing say line work like that, and as you're doing washes, it starts to ebb away a little bit at the line work. I always like to go in at the very end to go back over all of the line work that might've gotten eroded a little bit as I painted around it or near it or over it. And that just sharpens everything up instantly. And that's actually something that I used to do with with microns too, when I did microns is after I finished everything up, I would go back over and crispen up all of the line work. That's why I love making sure that I pay attention to what pigments I'm using in different areas of the paint. That way when I'm going back over and say, fixing up her face, the line work around it, I know that say the quinacridone violet, which is one of my all time favorite watercolor colors. I know that that was a base in that skin color. So using that to reinforce the line work later on down the painting road means that I can make sure that it's really cohesive and it has that same color family. And something that it took me a, a really long time to prioritize, and I'm kind of ashamed about it, is taking care of my brushes. So the better care that I take of my brushes, as far as cleaning them after I'm done with them and reshaping them, I, I've found I've been able to preserve the points on the brushes themselves so that when I'm using them to create line work or shapes and edges, I'm able to get this crisp control over it. When I don't really take care of my brushes, they start getting frayed and these loose hairs that'll stick off in strange directions. And I can't tell you how many times I've went in to create this really sharp, crisp edge on something. And then that flyaway hair just scrapes in there and totally ruins that perfect line that I almost had. So, so yes, I've, I've made a lot more attention to making sure that I take care of my brushes and put them away and shape them and make sure that they're not leaning on anything so they get bent. So, so yeah, I think just showing a little bit of care to your brushes can go a long way for one, saving you money in the long run and two, making sure that you can get these sharp, crisp, controllable brushes. 
And I do actually have this original painting available as well as prints of her over at my shop. So if you'd like to check that out, there's a link down in the description that'll take you over there. I also have a link to my Patreon page, which I do wanna give a huge thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. You guys are amazing. You helped me to create more and more artwork. So, so yes, go check that out if you're interested. And uh, that's about it for today. So I will be back next week with some more art content. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you then.